<coughs> so, okay, uh, so today we're going to study the theory of form by Plato. Okay, now if I ask you a few things, like first question is that, <coughs> so have you drawn all the pictures here? The box or the triangle? So let me erase that. And now draw this box, the T column. And here you write down the objects. And here you write down, or you can write down this one, the physical. And here you write down the ideas, <coughs> concepts. Or you can write down ideas, concepts, and then write down the metaphysics. If I just uh, think of this one, a beautiful moon, and then write down this one too, forest, or trees, or animals. So if you think of the beautiful moon, Beautiful moon is an object, right? The moon is an object. Yes. The forest, the trees, the animals. So what does it remind you when you think of beautiful moon? What is the idea that it generates? The beautiful moon? Is a person. Beauty. Beauty. It generates what? Beauty. Beauty. And if you just think of the forest, trees, and animals, what does it generate? The ideas? Greenery. Nature. 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 Right? Nature. And if you think of like this one, the people are human, right? What does it generate? It generates two concepts. One is evil, one is human. angel. Good. Good. Good and evil, right? Yes. This is what it generates. So I gave you a thing like every object that you find in the universe, somehow it generates <coughs> Idea. An idea. Every time, if you think of like <coughs> anything, like uh, now look at this one beauty, nature, evil, and good. And look at this one beautiful moon, forest, trees, or animals, or human. These objects can be seen and sometimes can be touched, right? Well, then smell like it takes you five senses right yes <clears throat> but this one takes you only one sense what is that sense perception six sense you just think because you cannot touch the ideas can you touch the ideas no. you no. can only feel the idea that it exists right is it secondary imagination can you apply now it says that like you can only perceive it with your what? The sixth sense. Can you touch beauty? No. 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 Can you touch beauty? No. Can you touch the nature? No. no. You cannot touch it. Can you touch the evil? No. no. Can you touch the good? No. no. You can feel it. You can just only feel it. Feel it. Right? This is the feeling that. And what helps you to feel it? Six. 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 <clears throat> now go for this one. I think you have drawn a Box. Table, right? Or a box, or a triangle, or a tree, right? Now the question to you is that <clears throat> the first one who has invented the table, the first one who has invented the table, how did he get the idea that the table looks like this? From his imagination. The question is. The first one in the universe who has invented the table, I don't know his name, or even the first one who has invented this chair, like how did he know that this is how a chair will look alike? This is how a table look alike. He imagined. He imagined something. Oh, he imagined first. Oh, yes. Okay, done. He imagined first, then he, he imagined, imagined it first, right? Then he applied right? it. 
That means that he imagined it first. Now the question comes in your mind. The image, that is what? There is a picture of the imagination? Right? At first you have closed your eyes and then you think, oh yeah, this is how a table will look alike. Done. Imagination. Close. Full stop. Then you try to what? You try to copy your imagination. Alright? Yes, sir. At first you have imagined what? The table. This is how the table is looking alike. And then you try to <coughs> copy your imagination. Right? And now Plato asks you the questions. There is a question for Plato right now. Now Plato is saying you that uh, when the maker or the manufacturer or the dreamer when he dreamed of that table at first, it was the ideal version. It was what? Ideal, ideal version. version. But when he made it, it's not the ideal version because there's a lot of differences between the imaginative versus ima imaginative version and the real version. There's a lot of difference. Now, if you just go for everywhere right now, like in every table, you find what? How many legs are there? Four. 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 The table might be a circle one, the table might be a square one, rounded one, whatever it is. But we call the table what? Table. table. You never call the table a chair or a chair a table. Right? Yes, sir. What does it mean? That even the shapes are different, the size are different, the colors are different, but still the table is what? Table. The table. What? Because it is made by four legs. No. Four legs. Because the concept. Because the concept is what? Table. Table. The concept is same. Same. The concept is what? Same. same. Since the beginning till now, the concept is what? Same. 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 <laughs> so Plato is saying you that things might change, but the concept will always remain the same. Yes. Now, look. Let me give you the example. If you are using a mobile phone, the very first phone, it was what? A land phone, right? <laughs> then it came for a big phone, a heavy phone in your right? where you can only call. That's it, done. Right now you find that what? There is a huge revelation right now. And you find that there is a lot of brands, Xiaomi to Samsung to iPhone, right? Right? Yes. And now you think what? Are you calling Xiaomi a different one? No. Mm. You are calling it a mobile, mobile phone. Done. Smartphone, smartphone. You are not changing the thing. Why? Because the concept is the same. The same. And I'm clearly telling you that there must be two worlds then. One is ideal world. One is what? Ideal, ideal, world. ideal world. What is I what is an ideal world? The ideal world is something like everything is perfect, inch perfect. Human will never die. There will be no policy of the human. You get it? The ideal world, there will be no policy of the human, there will be no limitations of the human, there will be no limitations of anything. Everything is in its okay. ideal state. <coughs> and now, if you think of, like, even the animals, if you think of what? The, in, in the ideal state, the animals will be looking absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, there will be no policy. Whatever you create, everything is in the ideal state. Now, Plato is saying that, Human beings, you know, human beings somehow perceive the concept from the ideal world and then he tries to copy it in this real world. And then he makes something. But he always becomes frustrated because he cannot copy exactly the same, the way he has imagined. Let me tell you what. Like, <clears throat> if there is a fashion designer, if she or he wants to make a dress, at first, what does he do actually? Sketch. First sketch. sketch, like he tries to, you know, just go for the sketch through what? Through the help of? Imagination. Imagination. Right, this is the first sketch. <coughs> and then he tries to, or he, shy, and he tries to sketch it, then he makes the dress, right? And then he finds what? Stop going. Stop going. That's not exactly how I want it. Right? Now, Plato is asking you the question here, that this is the problem of this world, like exactly there is no perfection. And then he says that a triangle, you're saying that a triangle is 180 degrees, then he says, 
Let's do it. Measure it. It's not 180 degree. It can be less than 180 degree, or maybe you know higher than 180 degree. But it's never ever. It's 100. Absolutely 180 degree is the perfection. It's not going to come. And then he says that draw a straight line. Draw what? A straight, straight line. line. You find investigating. It's never becoming straight the way you want it. There is always a policy. And then he says that, now, <clears throat> the first man who has invented the table, at first he tried to just copy his imagination, then he made the table, right? And then he started to call the table what? A table. You never just, you know, question that term. Have you ever questioned that term? Why, mom, why the table is a table? Why the table is not a chair? You never question it. Have you ever questioned it? We don't question it. When you go, you never question it. Why you don't question it? Because you know that the concept is same. Yes. Everywhere you go, the concept is same. Now Plato is saying you that, interestingly, that <clears throat> everywhere you go in this universe, now he has the idea, like even the building, uh, like what do you think? You can see that there's uh, there in the floor there are uh, there's a tiles for that. You can see that there's blue tiles, right? Yes. And there is a, I think the gray tiles. Now think that that square feet. There's a measurement of the square feet, right? Yes. Right. Square feet. Now Plato, if Plato is there, then Plato will be saying that there is a policy in the square feet. This is not the exactly because he is questioning you. If you know the 180 degree, how did you measure that 180 degree is the standard? How? Now he is asking you the question that everything that exists in this universe is a copied version. Is what? Is a copied version. Nothing is real here. You can only have the concept. You can only have the concept of that real version. But everything that you see is what is a copy version. Now he says that, and this is how you can just sum it up. Real is not equal to reality. <coughs> real is what? The real is not equal to reality. Why? Now, Plato might be saying that, like, I think the version you have right now, what do you think? God is created at first what? Your body? Yes. I don't know. Uh, you, you have your soul at first, right? Soul. Soul. The soul is the original version, right? Mm -hmm. Then you came into this universe. And then now when you die, your body will be decayed. It will be no more, right? What will be there? Soul. Only souls. Only souls. The soul is the original version. And now the plane will be saying that your original version will be real, will be revealed in the ideal world, not in this world. So even you are here, you are not the original version of yours. <laughs> so you are the copy version of yours. Like there must they and they be saying there must be an ideal version of that. And now what he says? So he says that this is what the uh, really what you see. Really you see what? Like the tree is tree, the river is a river, but he says that you know what? The real is un, uh, the unequal to what? Unequal to what? The reality. 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 reality is something different that we never, reality is the ideal world. And this real is what? The imperfect world. Now let me give you an example. So in the religion, it says that like, the Quran that we are reading, the Quran book that we are reading, that there is a highest form of it, there is a highest version of it, and it's been saved what? Love the Quran, right? And Allah says you that the whole Quran, the original version of the Quran is saved where? Love the Quran. But right now you are also getting the Quran, right? What is the version? You are getting a replica of it. In the ideal world, the original version is saved. But the concept is the same. Are you getting it? Yes, 
So this is what Plato wants to say you that that to reach the ideal world, you know, everything that you see, that human beings or as a human being, everything that you find in this world, you if you are thinking that this is the ideal version, then you are in the wrong concept. The theory of form teaches you that there must be an ideal version of everything that exists. Everything. Now imagine. <clears throat> it says that in Quran, the birds will be singing for you in the heaven, right? <clears throat> Which bird? Ideal bird. Who will be never be tired. Right? It says that the rivers will be flowing beneath you. Which river? So uh, now, if you think of like everything, now it, it says that like when you have your own version, what what will be your version? You'll have your best version, the ideal version of yours. No one will there. There will be no fatigue. There will be no tiredness. No one will be exhausted. So Plato dreams of that, you know, everything must have an ideal state. And if anything that exists, if it's not in the ideal state, is an illusion. Is it what? Illusion. illusion. Just an infatuation. Yeah. This is what Plato wants to say. And now when you're reading into the poem, Ode on a Grisha Rana, if you just go through the sheet. Now I need to say something about John Keats actually. Yeah, until, uh, now, if there's a French term of that real is unequal to reality, is not equal to reality, it's called simulacra. What is simulacra? Simulacra means copy of the copies. Now, even imagine that if you think that you have this handout, right? Do you think this is the original version of the handout? No, <coughs> sir, it's copy. copy. It's copy version. Oh. And now, if you just go for the original version, you're not finding it. Who has this original version? Now, even if you think of who has, uh, at first John Keats had written the poems in his hand, right, with his own hand, right, in the manuscript. Then the, this manuscript was sent where? To the publishing house. Then this publishing house had started to publish his poems. Then it came into a book. And where is that book? But you have this poem right now. His poem is in your hand, right? Yes. So, so you're not reading the ideal version of the John Keats. You're reading the copied version of John Keats. This is what the theory of form is. There must be two states. One is ideal state, and one is the state of imperfection. Now, John Keats was born in 1795, and he died in 1821. This great poet lived for only 25 years. How many years? 25 years. 25 years. Sadly, 25 years. Uh, he lost his father when he was 8 years old, and he lost his mom when he was 14 years old. And then, <coughs> uh, there, were, there were like four siblings actually, and he was the eldest one. Eventually, John Keats wanted to be a physician actually, kind of like a doctor. And he practiced that even, and he was really good at it. But then he became bored of it, and he started writing poems. Uh, and he, when he started to write poems, he found that uh, people are neglecting him. But you know, when it was his mom died due to tuberculosis, it's been like TB, and he also died due to tuberculosis. It was a uh, you know, it was kind of like a viral disease during that time. Actually, people are dying of tuberculosis, and John Keats, I think, he, he, it's not only his mom and he, I think, he, one of his brothers as well died of tuberculosis. So John Keats was. Uh, he exactly knew that very soon he's gonna die. Why? Why? Because he has got what? Tuberculosis, right? So he says that when everyone is playing around, he would be sitting in the library, and he would be sitting in the library watching the kids, they're playing around, and he'll be reading, and he'll be thinking that, you know, I'm left with very few years and I'm gonna die soon. And he would never, you know, just indulge himself are not involving himself in like playing with his friends and things. He was very much reserved because he knew that exactly he's going to soon uh, go to that ideal state of the mind. So John Keats, uh, in his tombstone, that is called tombstone, where he died actually, uh, there is a 
famous writing written on his stone, and you can write it down. Here lies the one whose name was written on the water. It says something like that. In his grave it's written, here lies the one. Here lies the one. Whose name was written where? Why is in water? Why is in water? Because if you write something with water, it fades that way. Right? What do we do with the water? It fades that way. So it means that in really nothing exists. But his name is written, and he believes that his name will be written in the eyes of the stick where it's not going to be raised. There will be the forever. It means that never be. Now, let's just, I'm just jumping. Uh, I think the, uh, so we left it a few minutes. If you read that <coughs> Ode on a Grecian Art by John Kipps, what is the meaning of Ode actually? Ode is kind of a lyrical poem, it's kind of a song, but it denotes the sad, sad thing. Like, it denotes, like, a dejection. It's kind of like it denotes like uh, the unpleasant mind. It denotes a sad mind. This is what an old is. And if you think of, uh, because I'm going fast, Grecian. What is Grecian? Grecian means that an art of Greek, an art of Greece. Okay, now what is an art? My mona, give concentration, my mona. Uh, if you go for So, Grecian means what? Greece. An art of what? Greece, right? So, John Kicks was written and he was inspired by the Greek culture. And if you think of an, what is an art? A bus, a top. Or if you think of. So what? this is an art actually, a kind of like, but this art is not as usual that you think actually. This art is different actually. This art is what? If you find that art, you mean, if the... Used for storing the ashes of a Exactly. So if you're just thinking of like, the, in Hindu tradition, I think that is the process of burning the dead bodies, right? And when you burn the dead body, then you collect the ashes and you just keep it in the art. This is this box is known as what art. And now interestingly, now think of that. This art is what an object, but the concept is what inside it what death. Are you getting? Is what? This art is what? No, this art is what? It's an object, just like a teapot, an object. But inside that arm, what is that? The form. The form. Huh? form. So form of it a certain. This is what I'm saying. Right? This is what? What was what, there? Reality. Reality. But real is what? It's an arm. But reality is what? The ashes of a dead body. Death. Another form. You get it? That's why it's now uh, old and efficient arm. But interestingly, He's not saying you know, anything uh, like from his of his own actually. He's saying you that outside part of this art, there are a lot of arts actually, designs out there. There are a lot of pictures, and he's just describing the pictures for you. He's doing what? Describing, describing the pictures, pictures for you. Uh, that means that the imagination. And now look. Imagine that. Oh, well, I think this would be okay. So this is what? Marker. Mm -hmm. Marker. Marker, right? And you see that in the outer part of the marker, there are so many things that are written, right? Yes, sir. Right? Now he's doing what? He's just describing the outer part of the marker. He's describing the outer part of the arm. And when he's describing the outer part of the arm, now think of this. When some, it's something like someone is describing the art, right? But the art is what? Itself is what? It's a steel. Right? He has nothing to say actually. But he believes in the ideal world there is many things to say. And now he's going to describe everything. Now if I just read the first two lines, 
and just go for it. If you have the shit, just go for it. I'm, I'm running out of time. Though it's still unwrapped, it's the bride of quietness. Though for the child of silence and slow time. Now he says that thou still, thou still unwrapped the bride. What is the meaning of unwrapped the bride? Here, untouched. It's something like it's a virgin. Someone who is just near the way, okay? But it's still untouched. So he's saying that, imagine yourself, there is, an, there is a bride in the picture, okay? And she's well decorated. And she says that, you know, she's a bride of quietness, absolutely silent. She's saying nothing. Thou was the child of silence and slow time, still when his story and who can't does express, a flower tale more sweet than our rhyme. What a little free she leads in hearts about the shade of deities of mortals of, of gold. In heaven here are the dales of Arcadia. What men and gods are these? What made is low? What mad curse sweet? What is struggle to escape? What cards and timbrels? What wild ecstasy? Can, can, I, uh, uh, can I just stop the recording? Uh, we are done with Sarah, okay? So right now I just need to make the one.